despotism. The United States of America's Jews and Ku Klux Klan's plot to enslave nations and or people of color. Despot, which roughly means master or one with power, and it has been used to translate a wide variety of titles and positions. It was used to describe the unlimited power and authority of the pharaohs of Egypt. And that's where the President of the United States of America, President Barack Obama, has placed himself. He's delusional. He's thinking he's pharaoh. And who are the puppet masters or the people actually pulling the strings? that have just using President Barack Obama as a front, none other than Baker, Donaldson, Beerman, Caldwell, and Berkowitz. Legal counsel and affiliate for the President of the United States and congressional members, as well as Supreme Court of the United States. They are also affiliated with the Ku Klux Klan. Yes, under the United States of America's despotism regime, style government run and controlled by Baker Donaldson Beerman Caldwell and Berkowitz, who is affiliated with the Ku Klux Klan, the wars that the United States engage in is racially motivated. In fact, they use the wars to train members of white supremacist groups. Look at the United States military soldiers, for instance, posing with the swastika. So colloquially, um, despot has been applied to a person um, that can be a head of state or government who simply abuses their power and authority to oppress their people, subjects or subordinates. This is the style or method used by the United States government, not here only in the United States of America, but abroad in foreign nations to get them to submit to their white supremacist regime or to surrender their will and power to their despotism styled government. Remember the Malaysian airline disappearance? Yes, the United States of America appears to be behind that as well. The despot and tyrant tend to stress cruelty and even enjoyment therefrom, while dictator tends to imply more harshness or unfair implementation of law. And that's exactly how the United States of America's government is controlled and run. And now it is trying to implement that amongst foreign nations and their leaders. Behind the scenes so that the citizens of foreign nations and countries are not aware that their government may be engaging with the United States to take them into slavery or to surrender them over to a right supremacist government. You can roughly locate any community in the world somewhere along a scale running all the way from democracy to despotism. One community may be near the democracy end, another somewhere in the middle, and a third may be near the despotism end. Let's find out about despotism. This man makes it his job to study these things. Well, for one thing, 
avoid the comfortable idea that the mere form of government can of itself safeguard a nation against despotism. Germany under President Hindenburg was a republic and yet in this republic an aggressive despotism took root and flourished under Adolf Hitler. When a competent observer looks for signs of despotism in a community he looks beyond fine words and noble phrases. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Opportunity for all citizens to develop useful skills is one basis for rating a community on a respect scale. The opportunity to develop useful skills is important, but not enough. The equally important opportunity to put skills to use is a further test on a respect scale. A careful observer can use a respect scale to find how many citizens get an even break. As a community moves towards despotism, respect is restricted to fewer people. A community is low on a respect scale if common courtesy is withheld from large groups of people on account of their political attitudes. If people are rude to others because they think their wealth and position gives them that right, or because they don't like a man's race, or his religion. Lost respect, former United States President George W. Bush's shoe-throwing response. United States President Barack Obama's foot-stomping defeat. Cycling about two. <laughs> what was that? A bat? Was that a bat? Is that somebody throwing something at me? Is that part of Cirque du Soleil? lost respect, giving Hillary Clinton the shoes and tomatoes. She was doing a flag raising at one of the uh, U.S. consulate in Alexandria, Egypt, and she was making some remarks, uh, ironically, about how the U.S. wanted to support Egypt's transition and the fact that the U.S. wasn't picking any winners or losers. Um, mm -hmm. That's been a criticism during the trip. There were protesters outside the consulate, and it was a little bit harrowing for her staff and us journalists. Um, when we left, they were throwing um, bottles of water, they were throwing sh tomatoes, and they were throwing shoes, which is considered a real sign of disrespect in the Arab world. And um, they, were, they were chanting Monica, Monica. I think it was a reference to Monica Lewinsky. You know, obviously they didn't understand that this was a, a, a totally new president, or maybe it was... Um, a reference to Bill Clinton, but certainly it was a little bit harrowing. Secretary, though, never in any any trouble, never in any danger. Her car and her vehicle were not hit, but one of the Egyptian officials that was walking out with us did get hit in the face with a tomato.